Hi, so I wanted to show you a really cool assignment that I gave my intro computer scientist students a long time ago. It shows that you can achieve quite a bit just by thinking about a problem. So here what we have is the goal being to find positive integers, A, B, C, D, and E, such that A to the fifth plus B to the fifth plus C to the fifth plus D to the fifth is equal to E to the fifth. I'm not going to tell you that a solution, what the solution actually is, but I'm going to tell you that one actually exists and I want you to actually find it. So pause the video, try to come up with such a thing yourself and see how fast you can actually find the solution. So the actual smallest one that was found in a paper in the 1960s by a brute force search, kind of what we're going to do here is A equals 27, B is 84, C is 110, D is 133, and E is 144. And you can verify this for yourself. So this is actually a disproof of a, a mathematical conjecture, and that's actually pretty cool that we can use a program to disprove a mathematical conjecture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you through some of the basic ideas of how to initially start with the solution, think about the problem, and get a much faster solution. So the first version I have here is a Python version, and most of them are gonna be Python just to make things easier. It doesn't have to be Python at all. So what I have, the main part of it is right here, which says I'm gonna start the n here at one, and repeatedly I'm gonna add one to it, and I'm gonna to try to run the checker for n. So that means the n being the largest of those five numbers in this case. There are other ways to approach it too, but n here is the largest of the five, and what I'm going to do is, if I found a result, I'm going to stop. So I, whenever I find an uh, answer to my problem, I'm going to immediately stop. So how does the checker work? What I'm going to do is uh, use the iter tools module. I'm, you don't have to use iter tools here. But basically, I'm just going to try every possible way of picking A, B, C, D, and E within uh, 1 to n minus 1. So here, it doesn't have to be n minus 1, but because of range is exclusive on the top end. But here, all I'm doing is if the equation holds, I'm gonna return that solution. If I try every single one of them and I never find it, I'm gonna return none, so therefore well, there was no solution there. And if you run this, it'll take several days to run, which is pretty slow. So what we are gonna do here is we're gonna start iterating on this and try to make a a better solution, which is faster. So this will find it, but it's just, it'll be really, really horribly slow. The second version I thought is, well, if we think about these five numbers here, um, the four on the left side of the equation, it does not matter how you rearrange them. So if you have two integers or any numbers really, you can interchange the order of, the, of them. So I might as well just assume that A is less than or equal to B, which is less than or equal to C, which is less than or equal to D. And actually one thing that we're gonna see is that D is also less than E because E is the sum of, of four positive numbers. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little if check in there and that's all I'm gonna do. Uh, everything else in this code is exactly the same, which is pretty cool. It does speed up a little bit, but not a whole lot. And one of the main reasons is that we're actually generating all of the possible candidate solutions is just that here, we're gonna be filtering out the computation, uh, which is verifying the, the, the conjecture, or at least trying to find the result here. So effectively, all that we're really saving is the time it takes to verify this for things that we, do, we know we do not have to check. There might actually be a solution in here, it's just that we don't have to check them. But here, Intertool's product is actually generating all of the solutions. So what we can do is let's just avoid all of the solutions altogether. But there isn't really a nice, clean way of doing that from the Intertool's module. So what I'm going to do in version 3 is I'm just going to have five nested loops, which is effectively what Intertool's project, uh, product is doing. But here I'm just gonna raw make the loops. And it's important that you look at what the loops are doing here. So here the first one is just going through all possible answers. But the second one is starting off from where A is. So B must be at least as large as A, which is what we want. 
And so I'm never ever going to generate a solution where B is less than A. So in the previous one, we generated it, but then filtered it out, which is unnecessary. So then the C loop goes off of the B va uh, value, D goes off of, of C, uh, and E goes off of D. And then I can just verify it and then return it. It is a bit faster, but it's still pretty doggone slow. So one of the reasons for this is the E loop right here. So if it turns out that we actually go way too far, so let's say that uh, notice that E is going upwards. So it's starting from D plus one, which we can do because uh, because all of these are positive, E cannot be equal to D. So we can shave a little bit off, but not a whole lot. So then what I'm gonna do is in version four, I'm going to restrict what things E could be. So notice that even if all of the four things down here are all equal and they're all equal to the largest one, then what can happen is since we're looking at the fifth power, what you can verify is that uh, e can only be at most the fifth root of two larger than uh, than D, for example. And what we can do then to make things easier, so you can probably shave this off a little more, but what I did was just to say, if the A, B, C, and D are all really small, then there's no point in going all the way up to N. We might as well just stop a little early. So what I do here is E goes up to twice D at most. There are probably other things that we can do here, but I'm just gonna leave it like this. And this does speed it up a little bit, but not a whole lot. All right, so then for version five, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna restrict them even more. So here I actually did move it down to one and a half, but that actually is not the fastest thing to do. So what I did here is if we found a solution, since E is going upwards, if we find that the E answer, which has to be the largest one, if it's bigger than the sum of the four other things, then if I increase E even more, then it'll never become equal later because E is all e to the fifth is already bigger than the other ones. And so therefore, if I increase E even more, the right-hand side of this equation goes up. And so therefore, they'll never be equal. So what I can do is I can just break out early. I'll never check two solutions where E is larger than the than what can possibly be. So then what I'm gonna do from here is I'm going to split this up even more. So one of the things in Python, so I went back here, one of the things of Python is that it doesn't actually know what it's gonna do later in the sense that it's all dynamic. So Python is a dynamic language, and so therefore, if we can make an optimization, we might as well make it because it, it can't infer too much information about what the program's gonna do. So here, what I have is, instead of having to compute A to the fifth over and over and over inside of here, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna pull A to the fifth outside. So in here, whenever I use A to the fifth, it will always be the same regardless of what B, C, and D are. And I'm gonna pull that computation out for B, C, and D also. And it's exactly the same otherwise, um, other than setting, uh, making a variable E to the fifth. So I make a variable called E5, which is E to the fifth, because here, if we're gonna be doing these two if checks, then I'm gonna have to evaluate e to the fifth twice, so we might as well just save the value. Okay, so for version seven, what we're gonna do is we're gonna eliminate one of the loops. So here, notice that we had a loop for e to search for the thing on the right-hand side. So it starts relatively small, and then it goes up and up and up and up until it reaches uh, the point where it goes past the intended target, at which point it will break out. That's what it's doing in version six. In version seven, what we can try to do is let's think about how we're approaching this problem. So the way that we're approaching the problem, I'll go back to the previous solution, is we're starting at one and we're just gonna go up by one until we eventually find a solution. So if we're gonna be doing that, let's just treat that as the intended target for E instead of having to search for it. What's the point in having this N parameter if the E parameter has nothing to do with it since the N guy is going up by one for the entire program. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna treat E5 as just being N to the fifth. 
and let the other four parameters be the ones that are searched. There's no point in searching this if the thing that we're searching is if this one didn't work, if this value of n didn't work, then I'm just gonna go up by one. So it will, we'll just treat that as the target for e instead of just having this be some completely different number. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that computation out and avoid this for loop on the inside. And in fact, this is the fastest version of Python that I was able to, to find other than running like Cython or PyPy to make this program even faster. I'm talking about the Python here, not necessarily what thing runs the program. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the program structure here. So this is as fast as I can do, but it's still doggone slow. Enter C++. So C++ is a faster programming language because it's compiled. And there are a lot of interesting things that we can do with it. So it's identical to the previous program, maybe just changing the if statement order, but it's not as pretty because we have to put the types in. And here I actually have to use long, long because something to the fifth power can easily ex exceed what the integer values can be in, in C++. Whereas in Python, the integers are arbitrary precision, so it can be as large as you want. And so we don't have to worry about overflows or anything. Whereas here, uh, what I encountered pretty, uh, pretty quickly were overflows if I just set everything to be integers because something to the fifth power really goes up really quickly. But the rest of the program is identical other than converting it into C++ in order to get it to work. But this one's also slow, a lot faster than the Python version, but it's still doggone slow. So the thing is that there are all a lot of interesting things that we can do here, but only will slow the program down. So actually one interesting idea is to only search valid possible values of A, B, C, and D. I, I changed them to I, J, K, L because I was working it on it at a different time. So one of the things that you can do is to say, well, if the sum is odd, let's say N is odd right here, then that means that the sum of the four numbers to the fifth power for each one of them must also be odd so that it could be equal. So if the sum happens to be even, there's no point in actually checking that solution. So what we can do for the, let's say L parameter right here, the, the last one, what we can do is to search the, the valid values of it. So if the first three, i, j, and k, have an odd sum, then let's say n is even, then that means I only need to search the odd values for l, not all of them. So I'll actually dramatically reduce the computation for that. The problem is, is that you're gonna be increasing the amount of memory that you use. And so the performance might not be as good. It, the important thing is that you always profile your code. You may think it might be faster, but it actually isn't faster. The thing that makes this program fast is not necessarily the structure here, but all of the options you can set when compiling. So I ran this with uh, G++ and O3 as being the flag, which is basically turning almost all optimizations on. And effectively this runs in about a second, this whole program. Whereas the Python original version ran in about a day, a little over a day, which is horribly slow, but it's a lot faster now if we think about the problem, structure things accordingly, and use all the available tools at our disposal. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this program into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.